Well, hi everybody. Thanks for coming. We have a treat today, Masahiko Otsuka. Hi. Otsuka. Prior to that, they were part of Gainax, which was this awesome Japanese animation studio. And they have done Evangelion, Gunbuster 2, Fooly Cooly, Gurren Lagan. Masahiko also worked at Studio Ghibli. He worked on Pompoko and Whisper of the Heart. Ooh. My name is Tatsuru Tadamoto, <laughs> the interpreter for my yes. boss. As Bobby explained, Studio Trigger was, uh, the, I guess, made by the staff, mainly by the Grand Logon staff for the Gainax studio. It's built on 2011, August, August 22nd, uh, with the director of Grand Logon, Imaishi Hiroyuki and Otsuka Masahiko, and the producer, Ma Masumoto Kazuya. We have about 40 or 50 staffs. And we'll start now, yeah. if that's cool. Hey everybody, I'm Grant. Uh, I'm in the art department. I, I've been following Gainax for a long time. Like I've been watching anime since since I was in I don't know high school. Um, uh, but I've been following Gainax in particular. It's it was one of my uh, favorite studios. And when Otsuka-san left Gainax uh, with Ima Imaishi, they took a lot of those same like creative talents and formed the studio. Uh, and so now I'm going to be following Trigger. <laughs> I read an interview uh, with Otsuka-san, and he was talking about. Uh, there was a change, he felt like there was a change in the anime industry and he felt it was the right time to go out on his own and start a company and I was curious if he could explain uh, what that change is and what kind of what he what he sees trigger you know at, as a company kind of becoming in, in the anime industry or so the, your previous work was uh, Panty, Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt, mm -hmm. and after after they finished that series, they were debating whether to make their new series within Gainax again, or possibly a new studio, a different studio. Mm -hmm. They wanted to try something new, and uh, I guess choosing where, which studio to work within was the first big, big uh, you know, decision they had to make. Mm -hmm. After debating for a while, you know, which studio to work with, they just, you know, they felt that it might be a, cha a new challenging and also interesting to just why not start a studio ourselves, you know, and that, that's where Trigger came from. A little more creative freedom, maybe? To be honest, Gainax itself was very like free. They they allowed us to do almost everything we wanted to. We also felt like that the the Gainax, the studio was protecting us. You know, mm. to truly test our abilities, we might have have to you know leave yeah. Gainax and make a start a new studio. Mm. This short uh, was actually. Uh, sponsored by the Japanese government, uh, it's called the Anime Anime Mirai. Anime Mirai Project. Yeah, it's kind of what happened uh, in the '70s in the U.S. when Disney realized that all the the Nine Old Men and all, all this like artistry was kind of dying off, uh, and they weren't passing it on. So they started, you know, they started the school. Cal Arts kind of came out of that. I think there's something similar happening in, in Japan, and I think the government is trying to promote uh, the. Japanese animation and continuing that tradition because a lot of uh, y younger, you know, possible animators are either going into production or other more higher paying jobs. A lot of the younger animators, like recently, they, they don't have the, like, the motivation, you know, to like go willing to learn. Yeah. So, so the, the, these kind of projects are like, yeah. I, I guess it's becoming more required. Yeah. 
and they've been doing it for like the past few years too but it's getting more popular yeah. in the recent years yeah so it's like a main it's like a mentorship sort of is it like you have a main animator and he takes on a few assistants is that how it works so for our studio it was just it just happened to be all one person Mr. Yoshinari Yo. but for other studios you know there might be like for character design some so and so might teach them for like you know other like action or something someone else might might take that I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the budget that they had to work with then and, and sort of any of any creative shortcuts they had to take and, and, and sort of where they put the mo most money and, and, and time into for a budget, we received from the government about like twice the amount from compared to a usual television series for one episode though. But on the other hand, when we make a television series, we usually get the budget for the whole series. So if it's like one season, it'll be for like 12 or 13 episodes. We have the, we have more freedom, you know. Maybe we will use like 10% on episode one and 5% of the budget on episode two. So in terms of that, we may we probably felt like maybe like 1.5 times more than like a decent normal episode. Yeah. I, I ask because uh, the quality is a lot higher in terms of I'm used to a lot of uh, television and Japanese television animation you know there's a lot of, of uh, stills you know talking heads and I know that's you know budgetary uh, and then they put a lot of money into like an action sequence or something that really has impact this felt very uh, um, consistent like throughout you know the quality of the animation uh, the art direction uh, the color uh, everything felt like at a really high level. So usual animation, like te television series, are like about we in Japan we use about three thousand to on, on the minimum three thousand pictures. Mm -hmm. On the more like you know better episodes, we might use six thousand. Mm -hmm. So Grand Lagan and the new Kill a Kill, we're using about eight thousand. But uh, Little Witch Academia, we use seventeen thousand. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe like three times more than the usual episode. So I'll open it up. Do you, if anyone else has any questions. Uh. I'm curious. Uh, is this a standalone piece, or will this be a standalone series? It seems quite strong, and it could be. So like the the Anime Mirai project, which funded this episode, after it show it goes air on the theater for three months, the studio gets the the whole copyright. And currently, we are trying to you know make it into a series or you know, possibly another episode. That's pretty unique. That's really cool that that they the the government allows that to uh, to happen. Like they don't maintain the copyright because. I don't know if that's uh, standard in Japan. Like, who? I, I, I think like the big studios, like who, it's wh whoever pays for the show, like do they retain the rights or do the studios retain the rights? It's usually up to the whoever pays funds the mo most money. But in Japan, usual te television series, there's like a whole bunch of sponsors. What inspired the story for you guys? Like, what made you want to make Little Witch Academia? Initially, we we had, we had a little talk with the director of Little Witch Academia. There were there was two plots that we had. One of them was like a more action-heavy story, and the other one was this girls going to school. And the project's main point is to educate or to you know give more experience to the animators. So the director and he thought that the an the young animators might be able to like I guess relate to the characters of the stories more if they you know since it's both they're both learning and they're both both kind of going to a school. Oh. Do you find in Japan is it harder to make original ideas as opposed to ones that are based off of like a manga or something? Uh, the originals are a lot more difficult to do make in Japan. There's a lot of sponsors for animation series, and as a sponsor, they they don't want to take that much you know risk. Play it safe, animating like a manga. It gets really like limited. You know, it, need, they need, it needs to be like a really big studio in Japan to do like an original series like Ghibli or Sunrise. It's I mean it's pretty much like Hollywood like. They they want something that's like already got a built, yeah, they, built in audience. Plus, manga in Japan is, I think, much more prevalent than anime. Like, manga has a larger following than comics. I think so too. Yeah. Than because anime is still, I don't think a lot of people realize that it's a little more niche uh, compared to comics. Because a lot yeah. of different people read comics, but not that many people 
only a certain type of person watches anime. I think it's publicly still like, you know, understood that uh, anime is for little kids yeah. m- mainly. But manga, there's like, you know, everyone reads manga or yeah. comic books. So I think that. <laughs> so what's the target audience for like? Uh, I think this lit- little witch. witch. Yeah, yeah. The producer said everyone. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Um, so because anime seems to be kind of like more of a niche for a younger audience, is your studio going to try to do something different? Like you make it more for teens, things like your TV series is a little bit more adult. We're just making what we want to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Imaishi is directing, so it's probably going to be pretty adult. <laughs> yes. pretty crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, Mr. Imaishi is uh, basically an adult children. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a little bit of Imaishi goes a long way. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming by. Thank you for us. Let's go on. Thank you guys. <laughs> 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 <laughs>